Hey there, my name is Tyler Lloyd and I'm on a mission to turn my property into a native plant oasis. In order to do that, I have to remove a whole lot of invasive species, one of which is bush honeysuckle. Back in May, I started making a video about removing bush honeysuckle and one thing led to another and I never got around to finishing that video. But that's actually kind of good because right now is one of the best times to be tackling it. I'll tell you more about that at the end of the video. For now, let's head back to past me to tell you a little bit more about honeysuckle. This is bush honeysuckle, and I really hate this plant. And once you know this plant, you probably start seeing it everywhere if you're like me. And if you're like me, you probably want to know how to get rid of this horrible plant, which I am going to talk about in this video but not before telling you a little bit more about my nemesis. Bush honeysuckle refers to several species of Lonicera native to Asia and Europe, and people have grown them as an ornamental for their attractive foliage, for their fragrant flowers, and I do have to say, they do have very fragrant flowers, and the berries that they produce. But these are not native to North America and are very invasive. They spread rapidly and just take over an area. The most common species of bush honeysuckle in North America include the Amor honeysuckle, which is mostly what I'm dealing with, a plant that can grow 20 feet tall. Then there is the Tartarian honeysuckle, also native to Asia, and that honeysuckle typically grows 6 to 10 feet tall and produces pink and red flowers and also red berries. Then there's Morrow's Honeysuckle, yet again, another Asian native, grows up to 10 feet tall and is very similar in appearance to the Amor Honeysuckle. And then there is a notable one that is not a shrub, the Japanese Honeysuckle. This species, native to East Asia, is a vigorous vine that has been grown as a ground cover or for its climbing abilities. I also have some of this on my property, but it's not as big of a problem as the Amor Honeysuckle. The Amor honeysuckle was introduced into the United States in the late 1800s, first as an ornamental plant in botanical gardens. But then it was promoted for erosion control. Right now I'm on a hillside and it is growing great on this hillside and is probably helping with erosion control. The problem is of how good it is of spreading and you know, blocking out everything else. A more honeysuckle is typically the first thing to turn green in the spring and the last thing to die back in the winter, so it shades out everything. It also releases chemicals that prevent the establishment of other plants under it. In one area that we had cleared last year, it was just all honeysuckle. There was not a single other living thing growing under there. Since it's been cleared, other stuff is popping up. Mostly weeds at this point, but there are some natives. And that's why I'm trying to get rid of it, to replace it with things that should be here. So how do you get rid of this stuff? The first way is by just yanking it out of the ground. For small seedlings, they usually come up pretty easily, especially if after a rain. They have pretty shallow root systems, so you can even get out pretty big ones with the assistance of a pry bar. That's my first way of getting rid of these things. And then there's cutting. You can use pruners or loppers to cut the stems as close to the ground as possible. Make sure to remove all the stems to prevent regrowth. For larger shrubs, you might need some larger machinery, like a chainsaw, brush cutter, to cut down the shrubs. After cutting, the remaining stumps can be treated, which I'll talk about in a second, to prevent regrowth. And if you have a large area that is primarily honeysuckle, you can rent or have someone come out with a forestry mulcher. That's what we did last year in this area. And this whole understory was dead. And now you can see there's all sorts of stuff popping up. Some of it native, a lot of it invasive. So I'm still gonna have to manage this area right here, but it's nice to see that things are coming up. So honeysuckle gone, and this stuff is a whole lot easier to deal with. I think. And then after you've cut it down, you may need to treat the stump with herbicide, specifically Roundup or glyphosate. That's the active ingredient in Roundup. 
to prevent it from sprouting back, like this one. Now, when using you know, an herbicide, you definitely need to follow the instructions. And for me, when I'm using it, I only want it on the, the honeysuckle that I just cut down. So I use a spray bottle with a very direct stream and just very, very carefully just put a little bit around the edge. You don't need to coat the whole thing. You only want to get the cambium layer, the outer layer that actually is going to draw that herbicide down into the root system. There's no need to score it or drill holes in it to have it seep in more. You may have seen videos that talk about that. No, you only just need to get it on the outer edge and that should prevent it from re-sprouting. And I understand if you are concerned about using herbicides, you know, there are selective areas on my property that I'm not gonna use them because they're near things that, you know, just overspray, even though I'm very careful, is too much of a risk. So for that, there's another thing you can do. You can cover it with plastic and eventually, without sunlight, it'll die. But it could take a while. And then after you've removed it all, you're still not done. You're gonna have to monitor the area because some of it is gonna sprout back because maybe you didn't use herbicide or maybe it wasn't effective. And then there's gonna be new stuff that's gonna be popping up. Luckily, that new stuff is gonna be very small, very easy to pull out, especially a day after a rain. And then after that, start thinking about what you're gonna be putting in its place. What would be growing there if honeysuckle wasn't there? I've got some understory plants growing, like some false Solomon seal, some jack in the pulpit, trilliums that are popping up since I've removed it. I've got a dogwood or two or three. So just think about what should be growing there and put it in its place. And slowly but surely, you will start changing your landscape and turning it back into what it should be. Now, right now, which is fall, heading into winter is going to be a good time to deal with bush honeysuckle. When I started making this video, it was May. And you can definitely deal with honeysuckle at any time of the year, but if you're cutting it and applying herbicide, spring is not the best time because all the energy that's been stored in the roots is coming up into the plant, leafing out, so that herbicide is not gonna be taken down into the root system where you want it as much. So right now, as energy is being taken down, it's a good time to cut and spray. You also have the benefit that after a few frosts, many of the invasive species, at least the ones that I'm dealing with, are still green, but everything else is dead or dormant, which makes it really nice. It's easier to see, and you have reduced risk of overspray. So I'm gonna be spending my fall and winter tackling my problem, and hopefully, fingers crossed, I will have removed all of the big honeysuckle on my property. I'll still have to deal with saplings as they pop up, because of the seed bed and my neighbors aren't doing the same things that I'm doing. So I'll have to deal as those, you know, migrate back over to my property, but I will have tackled the bulk of the problem. If you have any questions about invasive species removal, honeysuckle or otherwise, or native plants, please let me know in a comment down below. As I said, my name is Tyler Lloyd and I'm on a mission to turn my property into a native plant oasis. Until next time, I wish you the best. Bye.